There are so many incredible lessons that you can learn from your time in pageantry, and there are a few that stick out in my mind that really became pivotal for my journey in pageantry and far beyond it. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Walker. If you're brand new, please consider subscribing to the channel and also hitting the notifications bell so you know when brand new episodes come out. The first lesson that I want to talk about is to trust the journey. I can remember when I was competing for a state pageant in 2015, I believe was the year, and in my head and in my heart, I believed that it was my time that I was going to win this title. Like this is what I had worked for. And I remember sitting in pageant orientation and the reigning title holder, Natasha Martinez at the time, mentioned to trust the journey because it took her several years to win her dream title as well. And it really, really stuck out to me in that moment because it gave me this sense of peace that what if today isn't my day? And if it isn't my day, what am I going to do after and how am I going to keep moving on? And I realized that I had to trust the process and what was happening in my life, even if I didn't always get the result that I wanted in my heart or the result that I thought that was best for myself. And looking back, I'm so glad that I did trust the journey and that I was okay with losing and learning how to grow from that because I feel like it set my year up as a title holder for success and it set my channel up for success and that's something that I cared more about in the long run. Another message that was shared with me that year was if it's meant for you, it will never miss you. And I feel like this is a really common saying in pageantry, but I think it's something that applies to all areas of life. If something is your opportunity, it's going to be just for you. It's going to be the right fit. And I think that it's really important, especially for women to understand that somebody else's success doesn't mean your loss. Just because she wins doesn't mean that you lose. And that all really comes right back down to if this is actually meant for you, it's not gonna miss you. So be at peace with the fact that sometimes it's not your day and that whatever the opportunity was that you're pursuing or that you wanted, it may have been somebody else's day and it may be for them, but there is more for you. There will always be more for you. So keep taking the determination and the amount of work that you put into preparation for a pageant. And if you're aging out, apply it somewhere else, put it towards another dream. If you have more time to compete in a pageant, keep applying it towards that dream title until you do achieve that goal. This is a really practical piece of information for pageantry, and that was laugh in interview. My goodness. I took my interviews way too seriously the older that I got, and I think that that's why I was a more successful contestant when I was younger, was because I truly had fun in the interviews, even if I was nervous. And then as I got older, I started putting all of this unnecessary pressure on myself, and I thought that they were looking for a title holder with the perfect answer, who always has the right politically correct thing to say, and that's just not life. That's not the reality of it, and that's not what makes you authentic and unique and yourself and what makes you likable at the end of the day. Day. So don't be afraid, ladies, be silly in interview, laugh. And I'll never forget that advice. I went to the Beauty Brand Believe Expo in preparation for Miss Montana USA 2018. And while I was there, that is what one of the speakers said. And it's kind of funny because that speaker shared that bit of information and said that it's so important that you enjoy yourself and, and bring that good energy into the room and, and have fun. And that was one of my biggest takeaways from that day. Like that was one of the things that made the entire trip worth being there and worth sacrificing for. And strangely enough, really small pageant world, I walked into my interview that year at the pageant and I saw that speaker who really truly spoke to my heart in the interview and I was actually able to have fun in that interview. So it was a cool, it was a cool time. Okay, this one is super, super cliche and I'm constantly exploring what this means in my own life, but also with my clients. And a lot of contestants, when they're thinking about, okay, what makes me me? What makes me different from other contestants? I think that we put roadblocks in front of ourselves when it comes to answering this question and we make it more complica complicated than it has to be. And the fact is that as, as humans, you're gonna have things in common with other people, but there's also gonna be those things about yourself and who you are and your experiences most importantly that make you truly different from anybody else on earth. So if you are having a problem with figuring out like what is it that makes me different, just 
you know, as you're going through different awards and accomplishments and life experiences, just ask yourself, you know, is it likely that another contestant in the pageant that I'm competing with is going to be sharing that same bit of information with the judges? And if it's unlikely, then it's potentially one of those great things that's going to make you very different from another contestant. So don't think too hard about those questions, but always focus on your authenticity and not originality. And that's another really big key that I have come to learn recently because I'm definitely a person that pushes away from trends. Like as soon as something becomes trendy, I don't want any part of it. And I realize that that's not helpful to me for YouTube. That's not helpful to me for social media. And sometimes you do have to lean into those things and you don't have to be an original. You don't have to be the first person to start a trend, but there is still value in bringing your own unique side and your own unique taste and talents to something. And that's really, to me, what it means to be focusing instead on your authenticity. You don't even have to focus on the originality. Leave No Stone Unturned is a piece of advice that I took away from a workshop that I took with Shandy and Susie, and they both won Miss USA in 2003 and 2004. And I ended up as a part of this workshop, not because I could afford it, but because I had won a title at the time, and that was part of our prize package. So I was able to sit in and listen a little bit. At the time, I couldn't even afford any private coaching. I knew that that was out of the question. So I was trying to absorb as much as I could from that experience. And one of the things that they said was leave no stone unturned turned and to me what that means is doing absolutely everything within your ability at that moment when you're preparing for a title or for a goal in life and making sure that you leave no stone unturned that, that you go the extra mile that you make sure you're as prepared as you possibly can be so you know whether that means practicing your any interview questions booking a coach whether it means getting a hair and makeup lesson renewing your wardrobe, finding different wardrobe, whatever that means to you, make sure that you have addressed every bit of preparation that you possibly could from head to toe, from the inside to the outside. The last little piece of advice, which I don't know if it's necessarily advice, but I just think it's good to put things in perspective. And that was, I think I've shared this on my channel before, but in case you missed it, when I was competing at Miss USA, before we walked out for the final show, there's a lot of staff behind the stage with you. And one of the staff members, which was in charge of alterations, I believe his name was David. And everything was in a rush and we were all about to get on stage. There's a lot of nerves and energy there in that moment. And he ran backstage because he was trying to get a garment to another girl, maybe an opening number dress. And he just shouted in the hallway, remember Halle Berry didn't win this pageant. Whoa, I, I still get emotional even thinking about that. And then after I heard him say that, I got to see an interview of Halle Berry. And there was an interviewer talking to her about being first runner up at Miss USA. And it's like, please, that's old news. But, you know, she was first runner up at Miss USA before she really got started in her acting career. And they were asking her, how do you feel about the woman that you placed first runner up to? And Halle talked about how she was like, well, you know, I heard that she's living somewhere in middle America and has got a husband and kids and that's about it. You know, she said something to the effect of that and she's like, so she can keep the crown. Because in that moment, Halle Berry truly realized that she didn't even need that title in the long run and that she was still able to become successful and that pageantry played a role in that and helped to set her up for her future success. But at the end of the day, she wouldn't trade where she is right now for that other woman's experience. And I think too many times we want somebody else's experience so badly that we can't even appreciate where we are in the present. We can't even appreciate the gifts and the blessings that we have. So really stop seeking others success. And, and it comes right back to the other thing I talked about. If it's meant for you, it won't miss you. So don't focus on those things of the past. If you win the title, awesome. Make the most of it. If you don't, awesome. Make the most of it. What's your plan B? Have two plans. Have the plan for when you win, or if you don't win so that you are best set up for success and that is something that so many contestants are missing and that just really struck me when he said that backstage you know Halle Berry didn't win this pageant and she's arguably arguably one of the most successful contestants there ever was at Miss USA along with quite a few other really phenomenal and incredible women who actually judged me at Miss USA the year that I competed and I can even remember before I went into the interview room when I heard about who our judges were all I could think about was this may be the first time that they're meeting me, but it won't be the last. And it was really interesting 
because I was judged by Denise White and she is the owner of a sports management company and months later we ended up both being at the Global Beauty Awards and I saw her there again and she received an award and then I got an award for best social media and content and I was really set on the fact that regardless of the crown and having it or not that I would still be successful and determined to do so and I knew that in the future you're gonna see me again, ladies. We're gonna be running in those same circles. So don't let one no discourage you from your bigger dream, from your bigger picture. I think it's an important reminder. I hope that you enjoyed some of the best advice I've ever received from pageants, and I would love to honestly hear what is the best advice you've ever received in pageants. And I would love if you would just share that with the community. I love hearing from all of you and I love to see each of you encourage one another. I think that's so beautiful. I love when I see comments and you guys are just giving each other this, these bits of advice or, or encouragement to lift one another up and that's so important. So please be sure to leave that in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and meet me back next time for the next episode. Thanks for watching this one.